Super Mario Brothers 2. We got this game, I think, Christmas 1988. We really only got games at Christmas time. This was part of a group of games that were radically different from the others in the series. I suppose at this point there was no precedence of what a Super Mario game should look like. What I didn't realize until recently, the reason why Super Mario Bros. 2 was so different, it was actually a remake of a Nintendo game that was only released in Japan called Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic. The original Super Mario Bros. 2 that was released in Japan was deemed too hard for Western markets. This is why we got this version. You can actually play the original Super Mario Bros. 2 as Super Mario The Lost Levels in Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo. This is what the sequence of games actually looks like. Anyway, enough of me waffling on. Let's get on with it. I love how you're just thrown into the game. Falling out of this random door in the sky. What a great opening. Looking at this game, it's a great looking game. It's weird and an unexpected change from the original, but I love it. I always like the change from the Super Mario Brothers where you don't squash your enemies when you jump on them, but rather pick them up and throw them at other enemies. This subspace concept to collect coins and extra health points is eerie, but awesome. What a great idea. I did find it a bit odd you collected coins to play in a slot machine at the end of the level. So are we wanting to expose children to gambling at a young age here? You get to choose from four different characters in the game, all with different abilities. Toad, who is very quick to pick up items. He's great in the subspace bits. Luigi had a high and long jump. I wasn't keen on this character as I found him hard to control. The princess, which was my favorite character, could float when they jumped. And finally, Mario, who wasn't special at all. In fact, he was so vanilla, I never played him. I think I spent most of my time playing with Toad. One of my highlights of the game with Toad is when you've got the key and you're fleeing the phantom and you're just flying down the screen. That really got your heart pumping. Maybe the only thing that got the adrenaline pumping as well is this massive fall with all these spikes around. I always found these parts crazy intense. To me, and I don't know what everyone else feels about this game, it's the glitches mixed in with the brilliant elements which makes this game so memorable. For the glitches, I mean, like what happens when these logs, when you throw the pow? These gravity-defying cactuses? Floating vegetables when you've just thrown the pow. Mushrooms on top of doors. Getting above the screen to bypass the entire level. And finally, when you use the potions on the ladders to get the subspace, it messes things up. You can't get in there no matter if you're at the bottom or the top. I'm sure there's other glitches, but that's all I could really remember. For the brilliant elements, the game designers were really on form. Lots of tricks and traps, they were really thinking outside the box. For example, don't fight Birdo here, ride one of the eggs to get to the next part of the level. Sneaky shortcuts, like this one on the quicksand, it was a bit obvious. I'm not sure which of my siblings did this first. Carrying this ninja star up the level to make this jump. Picking up this mushroom only to be inundated with these guys. Getting the extra mushrooms in subspace can also be problematic. Here, on this whale's tail, and this one here, you need to destroy these blocks before you go into subspace. I even like these random spaceships. I don't know why they're in the game, but I'd miss them if they weren't. Finally, how hard is it to get up here to get in this door for the secret? Most of the time, I just ignore it. The sneakiest thing about this game is probably the warp zones. Like this one in the whale level. There's even one in the bottom of this waterfall. Naturally, you would think you'd lose a life if you jumped down there, but no, if you carry on, there's a warp to World 5. I really like the different environments you play in, and this often dictates the character you choose to play with. This ranges from the pyramids in Egypt to the ice levels of level 4. Also, I think the game designers are obsessed with the waterfalls. They're quite prolific in the game. Going back to level 4, this has to be my favorite levels in the game. You start on 4-1, and a little ducking and diving like Neo in the Matrix, then following on to 4-2, it's the whale level. When I think of Super Mario Bros. 2, I think of this level. This is the best level in the game, period. I always choose a princess, because I think she's the best character for the level, but it's just so memorable. This level is magic. The end boss for the ice levels isn't some sort of frozen creature. 
it's actually Fry Guy. Go figure. But to be fair, it's the best world and the best boss. All the boss fights in this game are really great. There's endless battles with Birdo who fires endless eggs at you. Getting the orb from these various Birdos always reminded me of getting the orbs in Castlevania. And who doesn't want to battle a mouse who's wearing sunglasses? The game also draws on ancient Greek mythology with the three-headed snake, the Hydra, who guarded the entrance to the underworld. There is also a crab boss. I think this is based on the crab from the original Mario Brothers game. Now, throughout the game, you always progress by going into this bird's mouth. But then suddenly, towards the end of the game, it comes alive and attacks you. I wasn't expecting this at all. It just shows you that the designers were trying to keep you on your toes. Okay, let's head on to the last boss, Wart. This is the only appearance of Wart, I think, in the entire Super Mario franchise. So we'll get the princess to feed him lots of vegetables. It's nice to see that the princess is in this damsel in distress like she is in other parts of the franchise. That's it. And now we see Wart puffing away. I'm not sure what the vegetables did to him. Now these things, whatever they are, are free. Good result for all, I guess. Now we can see who did what. Oh, it was all a dream. Well, I guess everything's all right then. In conclusion, as you probably guessed, I totally recommend this game. There's lots of trial and error and lots of exploration as well. Personally, of the original NES trilogy, Super Mario 2 is my favorite. I know, a bit controversial, but I like this better than Super Mario Bros. 3, mainly for nostalgia reasons. Hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.